first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. No doubt. This is about Godhood from the God MC. All right. So tonight, discussion will be metaphysically... Decoding world religions or world religions metaphysically decoded, whichever way you want to take it. And then we're going to get into that subject matter and um, really get into some real details um, because um, I had a discussion this past week with a brother who was just coming into consciousness, coming into this information, and he was coming from out of the school of Christianity. And I just felt like it was my obligation in order to give as much information as possible. So we stayed on the phone for over an hour or so. Um, And I was actually taking him through the Bible and showing him where God actually exists, where the Holy Spirit actually exists, where Jesus Christ actually exists, and how it was an allegory of fictional characters because if you look up the definition of allegory, that's what you're going to find embedded inside of the definition is fictitional characters. Characters. Um, so, you know, we was getting into that. So um, let's jump into this. All right. Um, basically, it was at the Council of Jamnia um, in 90 AD that the compilation, basically, of what we can now call the Old Testament uh, was revised. And coming from the ancient mystery school teachings, or what's called the Herbach or the Hakka teachings, which actually are the teachings of Tahuti, because Tahuti had 42 books. And the Bible is a summary of those particular books. The particular one is the rise and evolution of Ra, uh, referred to also as the book of coming forth by day and night, or the Perhem Heru text, or the Perhem Heru suit text which is also misnomed by um, Wallace Budge as being the Book of the Dead. Um, but in 90 AD at the Jania um, Council, um, they was revising the original um, Septuagint of the Old Testament. That's when it began. Um, the original was supposedly been written by 70 plus 2 rabbis, um, but we'll get into that in a minute. 
Um, so we know that by the time of 325 A.D., Constantine, who was the emperor of Rome, called for 319 bishops. One of the bishops were was excommunicated from the proceedings, and his name was Arian, because he did not go along with the creation of this created creature called Serapis. Now, of course, you can find this in the book called Historical Origin of Christianity by um, Walter Williams. But what Walter Williams doesn't speak on is that it was Flavius Josephus, all right, who actually is Josephus or Joseph of the Bible, who played Paul, who played Jesus. These are all fictional characters. Um, Flavius Josephus, who was the first century historian, actually was, all right, it's Pisos or Pisos. Um, who was the first to declare his plays, all right? These were plays in which that he translated originally from off the walls of Tamare or Kemet or Egypt, all right, from the various texts um, later to become recompiled as the alleged authentic history of the, um, of the I guess you could say, of the Albion um, Jews, you know, and, you know, that of the Christians, you know, because we found out that Arias Pisos was related to the Jewish king Herod. Now, you know, Herod is mentioned in the New Testament in um, Luke as well as in Mark. So he's mentioned in there, okay? And he was related to Herod. Herod is probably one of the, one of the few characters in which that actually existed in which that he put within that storyline. And he was also related to the Ptolemies as Cleopatra Ptolemy, all right? And so that gave him access to Egypt in order to get that information, all right? So um, this is what took place. Um, there's certain other information, you know, in which that correlates to that because when we're talking about the word Holy Bible, we're talking about Helios Biblios, the Latin term, or um, Helios Bablo, which is the Greek, Greek or Greek or Latin, Greek or term, Greek term, um, as well as it's coming from the Ra Papyrus or Ra Papyra, which that was the original name of it, which is talking about the Book of Ra, or what is known as the um, rise and evolution or evolving of Ra. And Ra symbolizes the soul, so it's not a actual netter in that regard. Um, in other words, not a physical character. Even though this component exists within you as you being a physical character, this is how they anthropomorphize these characters and now have you worshiping something assumingly outside of yourself when actually it is um, within you. All right, God is within you. All right, or the netter is within you. And this netter um, is located specifically within your pineal gland. All right, Dakaris, a French philosopher, stated that the soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland. Um, the pineal gland sits at the center of the brain. Um, it is known as the mind's eye or the all-seeing eye or the all-eye seeing. That's what this actually is. This is the same eye that's on the back of the two do of the um, dollar bill, you know, above the pyramid. Except on the back of the dollar bill... Um, the eye or the top part or the triangle at the top part is not connected to the rest of the pyramid. And the reason why, because the work has not been done yet, it has not been finished. Upon finishing that work, um, the mind and the body connects, but it has to come through discipline, morality. It has to come through um, you actually applying these practical things in which that these stories symbolically, you know, what they meant, all right? So this is what we're going to try to do tonight is decode as much if this is possible. Now, if you get, um, if you go to um, www.angelfire.com, uh, right slash W-I, right slash fam tree, F-A-M tree, right slash J-O-S-A-R-I dot H-T-M-L, it's an article on Flavius Josephus was really Arias Pisos or Pisos. It says the true reason Pisos used the literary 
synonym of Flavius, it was not because of his alleged but untrue and hardly necessary adoption by Emperor Flavius uh, Vespasian. He was, in fact, this is what it says, he was, in fact, already a Flavian. So Flavius Josephus was really Arias Pisos or Pisos, and Arias Piso was, uh, was or played Jesus in the New Testament. This is what it says. So don't get mad at me, you know, um, if it comes to um, these wars being broken down in your mind. It's necessary so that we can reestablish and um, rebuild, you know, rebuild and destroy. Right? This is what we must do. We must destroy negativity and build positively. All right? So you get another book. Um, it's called Christ and Caesars. Christ and the Caesars. It's written by Professor um, Bono um, Bohr. Um, that's B-A-U-E-R. And it was a work in like 1877 which he stated um, that he concluded that the Romans had authored the New Testament and that Flavius Josephus, which is Arias Piso, was the inventor of Jesus, which became Serapis, um, you know, which was Serapis, uh, you know, Sir Apis. Sir means son. Apis means bull, which is talking about the sun in Taurus. Astrologically, that's what he's talking about. Uh, which was under the Council of Nicaea, all right, in 325 A.D., all right? Um, if you go to the Roman, if you go to your Google search and you put in the Roman Pisos homepage, and um, Pisos is spelled P-I-S-O, or Pisos or Pisos, um, and you go to there, and it's called Albalor um, Rochellen. He found the key to unraveling just who the actual authors were and that the authors were to be found in the Roman Pisos family who was a who was part of the Fugi dynasty and that's F R U G I Fugi dynasty and it says that he authored a booklet that came out in um nineteen seventy nine and it was available um on that particular um website. Now, so I, I recommend that y'all go there so y'all can find out. Now, as I said, Arias Pisos was related to King Herod, the same family that supposedly wanted to kill the coming Messiah, if you remember the story. His so-called Jew or Jewish, like a Jew, Kazarian name actually was Yosef ben Yahu. Okay, Yosef is the Hebrew for the English transliteration of the name Joseph which comes from the um, ancient comedic deity or netter called Seb, which is the same word as Geb. If we get Joseph in the Old Testament as well as Joseph in the New Testament, this is what these characters was based on. And since Arias Pisos was from the bloodline of the Flavians, he became Flavius Josephus. He was also related to the, um, as I said, to the um, Egyptian rulers at the time of the Ptolemies. All right? So therefore, Arias was descended from the Ptolemy family and had access to all of Egypt and copied the hieroglyphics of the Medunetta scenes from off the walls and made it into a play, which is the greatest story ever told, called the New Testament. And the um, Ptolemy family ruled Egypt. There was 12 rulers named Ptolemy from, I think it was like 331 to 30 BCE. Okay. So that was before the Christian era, before, um, you know, Christ, as they would say, you know. Now, if you read um, Victor's Manos information, it's called A Short Synopsis of the Pisos History, or Pisos History. He says the family descended from Philip II of Macedonia. Now, um, you don't know who Philip is. Well, he was the father of two sons particularly. Alexander the so-called Great, and um, Lagos, who was called the Rabbit. All right, so the Piscean or the Piso line, um, excuse me, um, descended from the Lagos down through the many Ptolemies, who were the kings of Egypt, and is down in his decline, and is and is actually in his end of greatness, to include Cleopatra as well as also Arias Pisos. So in this day, um, they were all well known as many great writers mentioned them. 
They were members of the closed society of the Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism, all right? This book supposedly came from um, Zoroth- um, um, Zoroastra, all right, who was known as Zoroastra, which basically means the study of the stars, all right? And he was the priest of the temple of Zila in the homeland of Pontus on the southern coast of the Black Sea. Now, so astronism, for those who don't know, was originally um, in astro um, theologic or theologic um, theology uh, spiritual system, degraded into a religion founded around um, some say 700 BCE, some say 5 to 500 BC, um, allegedly by a Persian um, prophet named um, Zoroastra or Zoroastra. So the basic belief of Zoroastrianism is that um, there is a constant battle between the spirits of good and the spirit of evil. All right, um, you had um, um, you had um, Hero Mazda, and um, and this is what they believed in was was the god of good and the god of evil. This is the same concept that we find um, throughout Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. You know, you know of the good and bad, and this concept comes from the battle in which that was waged in the Perhem Heru text between Set and Heru. This is what this actually was coming from. This is what it was taken from. So in um, 66 um, CE. Arias Pisos waged war against Jerusalem and defeated the Jewish people. Right, the Pisos, who was a Roman aristocratic family, hated the Jews, all but the um, Herodians, which were basically um, the Sadducees, because they was related, they was relatives. All right, he tore down the temple there with the help of the um, of a um, Pisos relative named Titus in 70 CE. Just as Caesar, had, Caesar has torn down the Temple of Zila, and to co- um, basically to commemorate that his victory, he created a religion to keep the slaves humble. He and his family authored the New Testament, cleverly invented a Jesus Christ with the initials as Julius Caesar, oddly enough, who will replace Caesar as the head of what was to become the new state religion of Rome called Christendom i.e. Christianity. So if you don't know um, the science of ancient um, um, ancient Egyptian uh, mythology and the mysteries called the Harka or the Herbak, then you would never get this information. You would never know um, what is truly going on here. And you will always be confused about um, religion. All right. Now, there's another book called The Rise, Decline, and the Fall of Roman Religion, Christianity. All right. And it's written by James Ballantine, um, Haina. And it was, um, the next was written about this Roman um, authorized authorship of the New Testament. And it was in his, that was in that book in 1925. He wrote that in 1925. Now, there's another website y'all can check out, www.faganaspear, um, which is F-A-R-G-O-N-A-S-P-H-E-R-E dot com, right slash pisos, P-I-S-O, right slash. So that's www.faganaspher.com, dot com, right slash P-I-S-O, right slash. And in this article, it says the true authorship of the New Testament and it says basically um, in this article that to the slaves the Old Testament was intended to mean the Torah. All right, of course we know um, you know in particular the first five books of the um, of the Old Testament called the Pentateuch. All right, um, that would be um, the five books of Moses. Actually, it's called the Septuagint, or the Greek transliteration or the trans um, translation of the Torah. And it says, to the royals, the Old Testament was intended to mean the last will and testament of Julius Caesar. You can see here a perfect example of a dual meaning, one for the slaves and one for the royals. So now you must 
decide which one you're going to be. Are you going to be a slave to the mythology, or are you going to ex- be able to explain the mythology and become a royal? Because the royals understand the metaphysics of this information. So in the, um, the Septuagint, by the way, was written by the so-called 70 plus 2 rabbis at the Library of Alexandria, which was named after Alexander, 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 the so-called great in Egypt. So they tell you where the stories come from. Because the Ptolemy pharaohs were ancestors of the Fergies. And the, Sep- and the Septuagint um, was actually paid for by them because they actually owned it. And they decided to include it in their new version of the Bible. So it's also interesting that these um, were 70 plus two rabbis involved in the writing and that the Temple of Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 CE. All right, that's no coincidence. And if you go to um, www.axy.co.uk, right slash Christianity, uh, right slash, it says the Library of Alexandria. The workshop in which religions were modeled was Alexandria in Egypt. So all the religions of the world was modeled there in Alexandria in Egypt. So it says the focal center of culture, knowledge, religious speculation, and propagandism, it became the emporium for religious dogmas throughout the East and a place of the resort for the Disciples of nearly every system of religious faith then existing. The Alexandrian Museum and Library was founded and maintained by a long succession of the Ptolemies in Egypt from the beginning of the 3rd century B.C., before Christ, and then after Ptolemy the first Sultan, one of Alexandria's, um, Alexander's generals, also one of his brothers, made himself the pharaoh of Egypt at the suggestion of Demetrius, all right, um, he set up a shrine devoted to the muse, which is the Museum of Alexandria, and a letter dated about 180 to 145 BC first mentions the Library of Alexandria. The author, um, one um, Ar- Aristius, a Jewish scholar, is related about a century later a romanticized account of the translation into Greek of the Jewish scriptures. And he writes that Demetrius recommended Ptolemy Sota to gather a collection of books on kingship and ruling. All right? So this is what is um, said. And so Ptolemy gave um, Demetrius the job of gathering, extending books and scrolls and supervising the translation of the books of all nations into Greek. And the translation of the Jewish um, scriptures began um, began it. And at Demetrius' suggestion, Ptolemy hired in-house 72 um, rabbis for the project. All right? You know, so this is actually what was going on. And so the Jews has always copied features they like from the religions of their neighbors or conquerors and drafted their doctrine into the Judaism as the Old Testament history shows. So Ptolemy, or Ptolemy of um, Philadelphia, he set up the museum library and later the Serapism, Serapum, all right, which is where the Serapis um, image comes later on in 325 AD by Constantine because he was continuing that same um, lineage or line of information coming from out of Egypt, Greece, and into Rome. So the theological schools arose and a um, stimulating mix of pagan, as they would call it, which not the pagan, the word pagan just simply means the people, traditions, um, Jewish and um, Eastern thought developed, and ideas were adopted not only from other theologies, commonly in uh, Alexandria, but also from Zoroastrianism of Iran, and even through the founder of the Neo um, Platonism, um, Ammonism, Buddhism, and Hinduism from India. So men of every philosophy and every faith meet 
um, exchanging ideas and borrow religious doctrines, revising their own religions in the light of others. Wisdom. This is what it says. This is what it says. So according to um, Carl um, F. Um, Burge, B-E-R-G-E-S, he says how the Old Testament came to be. He states that although the whole of the Old Testament had been written by 150 B.C., he says the writers were not declared um, authorized or, you know, until 90 A.D. by the Council of the Rabbis at Jania. It was this group, you know, said, you know, some say of the 72 rabbis, which decided which of the later writings should be included in the Old Testament. Now, that's the same as what happened later on with Constantine taking the writings of Arias Pisos, which was taken from the writings of the 72 rabbis at the behest of the Ptolemy family from off the walls of ancient Egypt, as well as also from the Sumerian texts, which is um, the extension of the um, Zoroastrianism, the study of the stars, astrotheology. Now, if you get the book called Jesus Chronicles, Old Truths Uncovered by Judy James Carter, she states that it was not until 397 A.D. that the Bible assumed its present form. It first um, synod of Laodicea held about 363 A.D. in a symbol, assembly of bishops decided what could be read aloud. And they were Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, um, Joshua, jo- um, Judges, Ruth, Esther, First and Second Book of Kings, Third and Fourth Books of Kings, First and Second Book of Isra, um, the Book of the One Fifty Psalms, the Book of um, Proverbs, which is actually the Book of Solomon, um, Ecclesiastics, the Songs of Solomon, Job, Twelve Prophets, is um, Isaiah, Jeremiah, um, Baruch, um, the Lamination, um, the Laminations, and the Letters, Ezekiel and Daniel. All right. Now, the books of the New Testament are these. Of course, we know uh, the four Gospels, according to Matthew, which actually symbolizes Tahuti, or Mati, as his name actually was also, hence the word Matthew, or Mark, which is the word Maku, uh, which is a form of hero, Luke, which is Ura, which symbolizes Ra, um, John, which is um, On, or An, you know, which also is another form of Ra, and the Acts of the um, apostles, the seven um, Catholic epistles or letters, you know, which is actually the book of Paul, James, the two books of Peter, three books of John, Jude, and the 14 epistles of um, Paul, once again. All right? Well, it's, maybe call it the seven Catholic epistles or letters. I'll leave it at that, even though um, the book of Paul actually was written by Arias Pisos also, which we'll get into that in a second. So the authenticity of Christianity is based on the Jewish religion, which is called Judaism. But the word Judah actually comes from Tahuti. Matter of fact, the word Tahuti, when it's actually is said, coming from the Metuneter, or the Metuneter, it says, is pronounced Jehuti. Jehuti. And it's spelled D-J-E-W-H-U-T-I, or T-Y. The word Jew is embedded inside the Jehuti. And so, hence, this is where they get their name from, because they claim that to be the followers of wisdom, which is Jehuti symbolized, which is the Ippus bird, which symbolizes the form of the soul, and also the recorder of the deeds and actions of the netters. So, hence, when Muslims say, Assalamu Alaikum, and then they turn to the right and say that, and then they turn to the left and say, Assalamu Alaikum, or Rahmatud, or Berakatuhu, um, they're speaking to these two um the good and bad angel who records the good and bad deeds of their ways, actions, and behaviors, in which that when you look at the cartoons, you see the same thing with the, um, you know, with the so-called, you know, um, angel and the devil popping up, you know, on the le- on the right and left hand shoulder. That's what that symbolizes. All right. So um, all that is symbolic because there's nothing more than the two hemispheres of your brain. All right. Call your cerebral. You have two cerebrums, and they are the recorders of your deeds and actions, and that information is stored in the medulla and magata, which is your, your past lives as well as also graph, um, photographic memory is located at. That is the um, space within that correlates to gulf, um, which is one of the letters in the 22 Hebrew script, 
in which that um, gold um, symbol is an axe, a monkey, copy, and it symbolizes, and it also is called the mouth of God, which symbolizes the back of the head. It's called the back of the head or the of the skull. That's what gold means. That's the symbol of it. So when Jesus, they, when they say Jesus was um, crucified on Mount Calvary, which is called Mount Golgotha, Golgotha, Golgotha means the back of the head or the skull. And it says Jesus was crucified at the back of the head or at the skull. It's talking about at the place of the Medulla Amagata, which is the mouth of God, which is the copying center. So here's the reason why um, you see as part of the 22-letter script, um, Golgotha um, means copy also. Because this is the place in which that your memories are stored at. All right, so it's recorded within the cerebrum, which symbolizes the cherubims, the two cherubims in which that protected the Ark of the Covenant. You see the movie or the Ark of the Covenant, um, you will see them um, demonstrating um, that. Well, that is the ancient custom in which that comes from out of Ethiopia, the Kush in which they, they still practice today because that is where the, um, the Ark of the Covenant is located at. But the Ark of the Covenant ritual ceremony is symbolic to what takes place within your physical body. So we get caught up on the acting and the symbolism and uh, ceremonies and rituals instead of understanding the real essence of what is being conveyed, and that is talking about the energies coming up the spinal column to illuminate the Ark you know, of covenant, you know, which is that um, the blending of the lower nature and the higher nature to become one self. So our set, you know, awakens our saw, and he emerges as the awakened soul, which is Heru. That's what that symbolizes. All right? So we have to understand this. So during this period between 100 through 1300 A.D., there were about 4,000 manuscripts so we must understand that the Old Testament and the New Testament have been found to be a mixed cultural stories passed down through the generation to generation from Cush, Ethiopia to Mesopotamia. You know what I'm saying? You know, so um, therefore we can still utilize it, but only if we Afrocentralize it. All right. So this is what we have to do. All right. We can no longer fall for the um, the nonsense. So when you look at Genesis, um, Genesis actually comes from the Pehem Heru Sut, or the opening of the mouth, or coming forth by day and night, or light and shadow, also known as the Book of Knowing, the evolution of Ra, as we said, and the overthrowing of Apep. All right? Um, within that story, this is where um, the Canaan um, Abel story comes from, which is actually based on Sutek, or Kansu, and Osa. All right, you get another book that correlates to the information that's in Genesis is the deliverance of man from destruction, in which that speaks about the Nuonk Ra, a Nuonk Ray, which is talking about Noah. Then you have the Mer um, Papyrus, which is the pyramid text, and uh, Papyrus D. Orbini, or called the um, Potiphar story, or the tale of the two brothers which is the story of basically of Joseph in the Old Testament, which is the form of Seb or Geb. Then you have the traditions of the seven years, um, lean years in Egypt, all right, which is also about that same story um, of Joseph. And then you have the later story of the Mesopotamian um, legal documents. You have the Inu Elish, the Enuma Elish, which is the um, creation story, the Babylonian epic of Gilgamesh. All right, which speaks about um, um, Zia Sudra, which is a form of Noah, or the Utnap, um, Utnapishtim, all right, which is the form of Noah is Sumerian, as well as Arcadian form, or both of both of them are the form of Noah, but you'll find of Gilgamesh. Then you have the Sumerian tale of Dumusi, which speaks about the... Um, the Cain and Abel story, or Inky and Enlil. All right? And you have Adapa, which is basically the form of Enoch. All 
right, which is in the Old Testament, um, so in the book of Genesis. So this is where these stories come from. This is what the book of Genesis is made up from, is these various books that I just made mention of. You know, so as we go through them, I'm going to go through where all these books come from. All right? And no one has ever done this before. So y'all niggas, when y'all dare repeat this, make sure that y'all give me credit. Because this is real scholarship. So Exodus, it speaks about um, being derived from the um, the real history of Tutmosis, or Tahutimus the third, also of Akhenaten, or Amenhotep the fourth. And that information is to be found in the Battle of um, Megiddo, of the Asiatic campaign of Thutmosis the third, and the expulsion of the Hyksos under Amosis. And the latter story is that conveyed to Sargon the first of Arcadia. All right, it was called the Legend of Zargon. Now, Zargon, same story about Moses being put in a basket and being um, sent up the river to a family of royalty to be raised among. That is the same information, the same story in which that was in Sargon. And Sargon existed a thousand years before the story of Moses. And he actually existed. So the concept of God be, um, becomes um, Atan, all right, in which that um, that that's the concept of God, you know, became um, um, came from the ancient Kemetic or Tamaranian deity or Netzer, Atan, and that later on becomes the Hebrew God Adonai, Adon, and now even in Greece. The same God becomes the sun god, Adonis, which all three means sun, or symbolizes the sun. All right? So in the concept of the golden calf, which is also illustrated in the story of Exodus, that is derived from Heheru, or Hathor, and Apis, the bull, which is a form of Osar. So these various stories, we know where they come from. Leviticus is derived from um, the Egyptian tells of the papyrus of Ani, which is the my, um, the um, virtues of Maya, which is called the Maitian Code. This is where, um, out of the 147 negative confessions, as they are known as, we call them the virtues of Maya, um, they, get, they go down to 77, in some cases, to 42. And the 42 laws of Maya is what becomes the 10 laws uh, within your Bible. All right? Now, when you break down the signs of those ten, you have to go into some other information. Of course, you know, coming from the ancient Egyptian history. And we'll get into that in a minute because there's a lot of information. So, also in the Habarabi, codes, all right, that information of the 613 laws of the Old Testament um, came, a lot of those laws of the Habarabi codes can be found in there also. Um, in particular, um, the one about I for an eye, two for two, life for life, that comes straight from out of the Habarabi code, okay, Hammurabi code. Now, other collections of the laws include the Codex of the Ur, um, Namu of Samir, which was around 2050 BC. Then you have the Codex of um, the Codex of um, Ish Nuna, as well as also the Codex of Lip, Lipti um, Ishtar. All right. So um, now the Codex of Ish Nuna was written around 1930 BC, and the Codex of um, Lapit Ishtar, all right, that's L-I-P-I-T, Lapit Ishtar was written around 1870 B.C., all right? So those are the books that makes up Leviticus. Then you have Numbers, which is derived from um, the story of um, Sinu He, all right? Um, also um, from stories of Akhenaten, which is Amenhotep IV and Tahuti III. Then you have Deuteronomy, 
which is derived from the 42 um, negative confessions of Mayat, the papyrus of Ani, bladed the Habarabi codes. Other collections of laws include the codex of the um, of the same ones that we made mention of, of the Ur, Namu, um, Ish, Nuna, and the Lipa, Lapit, um, Ishtar. All right. Uh, then we have Joshua, which is taken from the Battle of Megiddo, uh, which is the Asiatic campaign of Thutmosis the Third and the expulsion of the Hyksos under Atmosis. Then you have Judges, uh, which has come from the myth of the Epiphany of of um, Sinai. All right, the songs of of um, Deborah is derived from there. Um, Sodom meaning the man of the sun, which symbolizes Ra or consciousness, and Delilah meaning the door to the darkness of the subconscious. All right, so thus, um, Samson symbolizes the seven rays of the sun, the spectrum of light. Delilah symbolizes the moon, shadow time, called night or the underworld. So that's what that all symbolizes. And it was taken also from the journey of when Amen um, to Phoenicia. When Amun or when Amen of Phoenicia. All right? And the Arcadian creation epic. Then you have Ruth, the book of Ruth, in which that was taken from the concept of um, Het Heru, which is Hawthorne, which becomes Hagar, um, also in the scriptures. Then you have Samuel, all right, which is derived from Samuel Ra, which means the priest of the sun god, and is partially taken from the Epic of Gilgamesh, the um, Lasnish Astra Ka, and the Arcadian creation epic and the tales of a cat okay so this is where this information is coming from y'all all right we got the book of kings all right that's derived from the um, from the comedy um Assyrian and the babylonian reign mainly from agnaten the um, taudi which is the most um the third um shikan the first Adad, Nauru, Re, the third, Tiglath, um, Palesa, the third, you know. So, I mean, many, many um, stories in which that these books of kings is taken from. Asura, um, Nasirpal, the second, Salman, Nesser, the third, Sargon, the second, um, Shinnok, um, Hurib, um, Nebuchadnezzar the second, you know, so this is where these stories are, are taken from. So you can find um, the stories behind them. The Chronicles is taken from the same books, plus also the Ugaric poems about Baal and Anis. Estra, um, the book of Estra is taken from the Paham Herusut which is the um, the opening of the mouth ceremony coming forth by day and night, light and shadow, the chronicles of the Chaldean kings, the fall of um, Jerusalem, Nebuchadnezzar II, and Cyrus, Nahime, um, Nahemia, um, information is taken from the petition for authority, um, authority to rebuild the temple of Yahoo which is based on um, Akhenaten and Thutmosis. Um, in particular, this is Thutmosis, not the third, but this is Thutmosis, um, you know, which symbolizes David or Dawid or Dawood, as he's called. And, of course, Akhenaten also symbolizes um, Solomon within the story. All right, so Thutmosis the third symbolizes Dawid, David, or Dawood, you know, and Akhenaten symbolizes um, Solomon. This is how they have it. But um, also Solomon's father has Psalms also who was um, um, Amenhotep the third. All right, he has um, information that he could also um, partly. He also symbolizes partly um, the story of David. All right, so they took many compositions, of many actual um, living pharaohs of Egypt and different other kings. And they compile these stories in order to make up these um, particular plays. 
of Josephus as well also of the um, 72 rabbis um, of the Ptolemies. Now you have Esther. Esther is derived um, from Ishtar. Ishtar means the star, which also symbolizes the brightest star in the night sky, which is the blazing star, which is Sirius, which is spoken about within the Holy Quran as Surah al Najim, which is the chapter of the star. Um, 53rd um, verse, um, excuse me, um, chapter or surah, and the 49th ayat, which is verse. All right? Um, now, we know that Ishtar is taken from the Sumerian deity, or net, uh, um, Netter, um, Eshtar, or Ishtar. And Ishtar is a form of Isis. And it's no coincidence that in the highest Masonic order of this Eastern star, um, they called themselves the daughters of Isis. All right, then we have Job. Um, Job is taken from the Egyptian um, excretion text and the Babylonian poems of Tabu Utel Bel, as well as also the Ugaric legend of Karit. All right, Karit. So this is where this information of Job comes from. As a matter of fact, um, it's the same um, story. As a matter of fact, in the poem, Babylonian poem of Tabu Utel Bel, it says, In my prison my house is turned into the feather of myself. My feet have stumbled with a whip he has beaten me all day long. Um, the um, purses me in the night watches. He let me suffer through torn my joints or torn asunder. My limbs are destroyed. My sickness baffled the conjurers and the seers left dark my omens. So this is basically the same concept in which that is mentioned within um. When you read the book of Job, he says basically the same thing. So we know that's where this information is taken from. The book of Psalms derived from the hymns of Akhenaten. We know that because Psalms 40 and um, Psalms 104 are identical to um, the information taken um, um, th- that they have shown us in the hymns of Akhenaten. All right, then we have the um, Proverbs, which is derived from the instructions of the Pharaoh um, Ptah Hotep and the instructions of Amenhotep and the Akkadian observations of life, and the words of um, Hakira, all right, which these papyrus date back to like 1200 BCE, and which directly inspired the book of Proverbs, which only dates back to approximately 800 BCE. So this is where that comes from. Ecclesiastes derived, is derived from the words of um, Hakira and the Sumerian Proverbs. The Psalms of um, Solomon is derived from the long, um, the love songs of the of the um, Arcadian hymns, um, also called the hymns of Ishtar. Of course, Ishtar is where we get the word Esther from, um, which is um, in the Bible, as we said earlier. Um, Isaiah is derived from the um, Tamarian papyrus of the prophecies of Neferohu. The words of um, Ahikar and um, the Sumerian Proverbs. Jeremiah derived from the words of Hakira and the Akkadian Mari letters. The Laminations of um, Jeremiah is derived from the words of Akira and the Akkadian Mara letters also. Ezekiel um, is basically a, a astral theology book. Of course, man is symbolic to um, Aquarius, or Pata, John within the New Testament, or the angel Gabriel, um, the lion is Leo, or Atum Ray, his female consort is Semek, or Segmat, which is symbolic to Matthew in the New Testament, or Uriel, the angel, um, the ox, which the calf, the bull, is symbolic to Taurus, or Osaru, Apis, which is um, Osiris Apis, a form of Osar, um, which is the strong bull, which symbolizes Mark or Raphael. And the eagle is Scorpio or Heru, which is the hawk, also which is symbolic to Luke or Michael, Michael, and which represents the four cardinal points of the zodiac. All right? And, of course, we know this comes from right off the walls of the Temple of Dentura, which is 
um, at the temple of Het Heru. Then you have the book of Daniels, which is derived um, from the earlier um, version of the Ugaric legend of Daniel, D-A-N-E-L. So the name is the same, which is the Babylonian poem of Daniel, which was about 1600 BCE, and it stems from the legend of um, Akkad. Right then, you have the um the book of the twelve um, minor prophets, as they're called in the Old Testament, which symbolizes once again the twelve um, planets and the twelve um, zodiac signs, as they're known as, which are symbolic to the twelve nutritive blood salts in your bloodstream and the activation of the twelve pair of cranial nerves in your brain, as well as also to the twelve melanin sites in your brain stem, as well as also to the twelve disciples in the New Testament. That's what that is all symbolic to. Astro theology, y'all. But also as above, so below, as within, so without. And whenever you're not getting that supreme axiom when trying to decode these um, so-called scriptures, then you're missing the whole point. So Hosea means, um, in Hebrew, salvation. Well, Husa means within the metuneta, the breath of life. So when we look at um, Hosea, um, it's the rendition of that story. To mount salvation means the breath of life. So Joel, um, with, to whom Jehovah is God, Huel, which is Hurrah, or Yara, or Hu, which becomes Yahweh, um, also symbolizes the breath of life or the breath of God. All right? Um, Amos, or Atmos, um, you know, Amos within Hebrew means burden. Atmos is within the Metoneta means to be drawn forth from the water. All right? Um, it's talking about the weight of the physical body. Obadiah um, means in Hebrew the salvation of Yah, or God. But Abba means within the um, Metuneta, the heart's essence of soul and knowledge. You know, so we're going through these twelve um, Old Testament prophets or minor prophets, and this is what this all comes up to. Jonah means the um, Hebrew dove. Um, Huni in the Metuneta means the breath of consolation. Micah means in Hebrew who is like Yah or God. And Merka means in Metuneta the light of spirit. Um, Nahum means in Hebrew consolation. And Nahum means in Metuneta um, knowledge of self. All right, the Habaku means in Hebrew embrace, and Habaku means God of the West and the East in Metuneta. All right, you have Zephaphani, which means Hebrew, hidden by Yah, or God, and then you have Sutek An, which means hidden, black power of heaven. All right, um, which symbolizes, of course, the hidden substance of prana, which is called Chi or Ki, and which that we absorb. All right, so this is what these names are symbolic to. Hagar, meaning Hebrew, festive. Well, Het Heru, which Hagar is actually derived from in the Metroneta, means the house of light. Um, Zechariah uh, means in Hebrew, memory of the Lord, think about, meditate upon, remembrance, or recollection, recite. Um, well, Pata Ra Soka means open of the way. All right, that's where his name is actually derived from. Malachi is derived, which means in Hebrew, king or angel, but it's derived from Maku, which is the form of Heru, which means the truth of the glorious light. All right, so all 12 books is actually derived from the um, Temple of Dendera, from the teachings, in which that is used in the religion of Zoroastrianism, which means the gazes of the stars, which is called in the Zen Aveda, which originated from the um, Israelites' exile which is called the Ten Missing Tribes of Israel, all right, who became identified as um, the Sethians. Now, this is all symbolic, you know, because the Ten Missing Tribes of Israel is actually about the Ten um, Strands of DNA, in which that is now encoded, in which that has not yet come back with the two strands of DNA, in which that 2012 symbolizes based on the current solar flag activity in which that is taking place and the reason why it's been warm 
um, a lot during the winter time this particular year is because we were supposed to be absorbing that energy to help correct um, the DNA flaws. And this is supposed to be one of the largest years for the solar, solar, um, solar flare activity. So it's supposed to be transmuting us and mutating us, transforming us. All right? Now, that's what's supposed to be going on, y'all. All right, so that is the science of the Old Testament. Now, we spoke about Arias and how Arias is basically a Flavius, Flavius Josephus, um, which is actually, he plays Paul, who's also, you know, also related to King Herod. So, yes, the one and the same King Herod of the New Testament. So Flavius Josephus was the famous first century historian. But in his works, the works of um, Flavius Josephus, translated by William Winston, um, he links himself to the identity of the infamous Saul, which is Paul, all right, um, character, which symbolizes the sun character, which is the allegorical character, all right. So when you read um, about him, you'll find out that the family of Rias Pisos, or Pisos in particular, is the ones who authored the New Testament. So we just went through the Old Testament and where that came from, and now we're going to show you where the New Testament comes from and um, who put that together by name, just like we did the books in which that um, came from, those 72 rabbis. We do not have the 72 rabbis per se, but we do have Ptolemy who um, brought forth those 72 rabbis who put those books together based on the books that we may mention of, which comes from the Metzunetta. All right, so we're trying to clear up as much confusion as possible so that, you know, in other words, um, the dude from Zadagai's is not going to is not going to challenge me no time soon. I promise you, because I'm not Ashwa Kwesi nor Pastor Ray Hagins. I know the answers. So the thing is, is that, um, and I won't have no problem whooping his ass with this information that I'm telling you about. No problem. All right. So matter of fact, you be able to whoop his ass with the information I'm telling you. So this is the point of what we're doing tonight. And that's no disrespect. I love Ashwa Kwesi and Pastor Ray. I'm just stating the facts of that. Um, if they knew this information, there would have been no um, chance of the little white boy from Zadagais trying to come at either of them. But because he thought that he seen some openings, you know, of some um, information. Because he, he was using Josephus, if you go back and look at it, he was using Josephus' information in order to beat up on them, and anyone who knew this information would have said, get the fuck up out of here. you using Josephus' information, now it actually was Arias Pesos or Pesos, a Roman aristocratic family who's related to Herod and the Ptolemies, and who wrote this goddamn New Testament, and he got that shit from the 72 rabbis? You know, in other words, it wouldn't, hold, it wouldn't have hold, held any weight whatsoever. So anybody who's out there looking at this other guy's bullshit, of the um of him challenging Ashwa Kwesi and Dr. Pastor Ray, you know what I'm saying? Leave that shit alone. What they're saying is true. All right, even if you don't know. So let's go to the book of Mark. The book of Mark is um derived from the title of Heru, which is like we said, is the name Marku or Mark Heru or Mark Heru, which is means the glorified body of light. All right. Um that was written around the time of 70 CE by Arias um, Caplonius Pisos of Pisos, all right? That was written by him. Then we have the book of Matthews. That was, remember, this was his plays that he took from the works of the 72 rabbis during the um, Council of Jania, um, 90 AD, as well as also him being related to the Ptolemy family, which he's seen also on the walls of Egypt as he traveled there and collected this information for his plays. So, in other words, he gave it right back to us. So, we might say, I might call it a play. However, um, as with all plays, we're talking about actors. And what do an actor do? They try to um, become the character. All right. Now, you have the book of Matthew, which is derived from Mati, which is a form of Tahuti, in which that was written um, in 75 CE by Arias. Then you have Luke. Um, which is actually Ra from Ra. That's what the name 
Um, Luke means light, Ra means light, which is written from 85 to 90 CE by Arias Paisos and Finley the Younger. All right, Finley, um, that's P-L-I-N-Y, Finley. Um, then you have John, which is um, derived from An, um, which is another name for Tahuti, in which that was written by um, Justice Paisos, a son of Arias Paisos, around 105 um, CE. All right, then you have the book of Acts, which is written around 96 to 100 CE by Finley the Younger. All right, there's a portion of Acts that is missing from the most English transliteration uh, or translations and interpretations. This is um, the 29th chapter, which has actually 10 verses. All right, then you have um, the book of Romans, which was written by Arias Pisos, all right, and um, Procurius. Um, Pisos and Claudia Phoebe, which was written around 100 um, CE. Now, when you read a portion of the Book of Romans, Claudia put herself in the book. She wrote the last few verses of this um, letter or epistle, which many copy of the New Testament in English leaves out because that portion was written by a woman. This is obvious, all right? And she even gives her name as Phoebe in there. You can tell where the previous male author leaves off and the female authors begin because the male author signs off with Amen. She wrote the last verses of the 25th and the 27th verse of Romans, the chapter 16, all right? Then you have 1 Corinthians, Galatians, and um, Ephesians, which was all written by Finley the Younger around 101, 103 CE. You have 2 Corinthians and um, Philippines written by Justice or Justice C. Um, Pisos or Pisos um, between 103 and 105 CE. Then you have Galatians written by Justice C. Pisos and his son, um, Julian. Um, who was the father of the Emperor Marcus Aurelius, all right, um, around that same time period. Then you have the first Timothy and second Timothy, which is written by Finley the Younger and Justice C. Um, Pisos between the years 105 and 107 um, CE. Then you have first and second Thessalonians, written by Justice Pisos and his son, um, Jelanius or Julianus um, and his nephew Salius, um between 105 to 110 CE. Then you have Thaddeus or Titus written by Philly the Younger, 103 to 105 CE. Then you have uh, Philemon written by Justice Pisos and his son Jelanius around that same time period. Then you have James, which is written by Justice C. Um, Pisos around 110 CE. Then you have First and Second Peter, which was written between 110 to 115 CE. Then you have First and Second and Third John, written by Julius Pisos, who is still another son of Arias Pisos, between 110 to 115 CE. Then you have Jude, all right, which was written by Julius Pisos or Pisos, 110 to 115 CE. The Book of Hebrews was written by Arias Pisos, um, who was, you know. Um, grandson, who was called um, Flavius Arrhenius, around around 140 CE. All right, and you have the Revelation of John the Divine, which was written by Julius Pisos, uh, around um, 137 CE. All right, so that is around the time when all of that was written. Now, in the Book of Galatians. How we know that this is an allegory is because in Galatians, the fourth chapter, the 21st through the 26th verse, it specifically says, Tell me ye the desire to be under the law. Do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, and one had a bond maiden, and another had a free woman. But he who had of the, who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, which symbolizes the lower self. It's not, you know... But he of the free woman was a, was by promise, which symbolizes the higher self. Now check this out. It says, which 
things are in allegory. For these two are the covenant, and one for Mount Sinai, which um, gendereth to bondage, which is Hagar. From this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answers and answers to Jerusalem, which is now and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So hence, this goes back to the teachings. Um, the mother of virtue symbolizes the um, the higher self. All right. Now, if you go to the Holy Quran, Surah 3, Ayah 6, it says, He, it is who, has revealed the book to thee. Some of his verses are um, decisive. They are the basics of the book, and the others are allegorical. Those, check this out, then those in whose heart is perversity follows the part of it which is allegory. Seeking to mislead and seeking to give his own interpretation. And none knows his interpretation except Allah and those firmly rooted in knowledge. This is what it says. So, the Bible speaks about Ephesians, um, Galatians, excuse me, four chapters being an allegory. We know 73% of the Quran is taken from the Bible, the other 27% comes from um, those that, from the Zoroastrian text, which is known as the um, Advin, um Aveda, as we may mention of earlier. It comes from the book of, um, the forgotten books of the Bible, the lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of Eden, as well as also from the Apocrypha. Okay? That's where the other 27% percent of the Quran comes from. So the Quran itself says that portions of it is allegory or in the allegorical. Now when you look up in the Merriam Webster dictionary, allegory means the expression by means of symbolic fictional characters or figures. But it says fictional a fiction. An action of truths or generalization about human existence. Also, as instant as in a story or painting of such expression, a symbolic representation. So, therefore, if Abraham, who's the supposed father of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, did not actually exist in human form, and neither did his sons Isaac and Ishmael, hence Isaac was the supposedly the father of the Hebrews and the Jewish father, right? And Ishmael, the father of the Arabs and Islam, and if they didn't exist, and they were symbolic, fictional characters, then the so-called monotheistic religions of Judaism, which is the Holy Quran, Christianity, the Holy Bible, and uh, which is New Testament specifically, and Islam, the Holy Quran, are partially allegorical in teaching and not just literal. And as we are led to believe by so-called religious heads, therefore all three called monotheistic religions or derived from the ancient African or African um, Kanu spiritual systems, hence Ethiopia, Kush, which is Abyssinia, which, of course, is um, and their colony, which is becomes Egypt later on, or Tameri. So you have the Tanassians and you have the Tamerians, in which that postulated this information. All right? So this is what is going on. Now, now we know who uh, formed the Bible. But let's get into um, King James, all right? Um, there's a lot of information about King James being black, of course, coming from specifically the group of the Hebrew Israelites, all right? Um, it might have some merit. I'm not going to get into that, but that's not important. However, what is important is that um, there is a book in which that, was written by King James, speaks about um, demonology, in which that is not spoken about, but you can go and do your research on it. Yet he was staunch against witchcraft, you know, in which that he also wrote this book on demonology. Um, so he also was an expert at demonology um, with that information. And he also was the Grand Master of the United Grand Lodge of England, which is the largest, one of the largest Masonic halls outside of the King's, 
Valley of Egypt, in which that um, he actually um, was the Grand Master of, and the, which which is the, one of the Masonic halls. Is a Masonic hall. Now we know that the word Mason or Freemason actually comes from the word Freemason. All right, which is the ancient Egyptian or the Metonetta word in which that symbolizes the child of the light or the child of the sun, which that's what the Ethiopians actually were. The Kushites were called the children of the sun. This is why they was called um, Ethiop, which means burnt faces, and also later on, um, Egyptos, which means burnt face. How they got these names allegedly by um, the, Greek, the Greek and the Romans. All right? So... We know that that was not their actual names. They are the Tarnessians, as well as also the Tamarians. All right. Um, if you get the book, um, family, um, Black Family of the Now, um, I believe, is called by Joseph Ben Yakinim, Doctor Ben. He states in there that the oldest name that we have um, for Egypt is Tamari. All right. So this goes without any saying. Now. We know that King James um, authored or uh, authorized uh, um, the editing of this Bible from the Christians, or uh, at that time from Christendom, which was held by the Vatican, or um, you know, I.E., which is now called the um, Universal Church or the Catholic Church, as it was called then. And he was moving away from them. Matter of fact, he got excommunicated, and he wanted to translate. Um, the Hebrew Greek versions into English. All right. Of course, it's a Shakespearean language because Shakespeare, who was actually Francis Bacon, who actually was the founder of the Rosicrucian sect, pen name William Bacon, or uh, excuse me, William Shakespeare. Um, some say he was also Saint, um, Saint Germain, but um, regardless, um, he was the 46th man on the Shakespearean Council. And he was at the age of 46 when he began editing the King James Version of the Bible, all right, which was in 1609. And it took him two years to finish it up, which was in 1611. And they was given the authorization to, to study it from 1604. So if you read Psalms 46 and count 46 words down, you see the word um, shaky. You count 46 words up from Shalah, which means the worship in um, Aramaic. Um, as well as also in Hebrew, as well as also in Arabic, which means um, to make salat. Um, read 46 words up, you see the word spear. All right. Now, Shakespeare was the name in which that is utilized um, as a code for the Shakespearean Council, which actually was a Rosicrucian sect. All right, shake symbolizes the motion during sex and activity of the Kundalini um, Shakti force energy called the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. All right, and then spear symbolizes the phallus symbol, the penis. So this is what this actually was symbolic to. All right, it was the science of Tantra Kriya Yoga, um, overtly known at that time by the Europeans or Albions. All right, and the esoteric science of the number 46 is based on the life principle of sex, reproduction, and bringing things into manifestation because it takes 23 chromosomes of a man and 23 chromosomes of a woman to form a human being into existence, which is 46 chromosomes. All right, so King James Version was translated by 46 um, individuals. All right, firstly, and then there was nine more who was added to make 54 scholars, although only 51 are actually known, and they was working in six different committees, two based out of Oxford University, Cambridge University, and West Miser, um, um, Minster, um University. Okay? So this is where they was working out of. Now, when you get into... The particular names, let's get into that, the names of these individuals, because that's something in which that um, we do not normally have the clues on, but we're going to give it out tonight. Um, they worked on certain parts separately. Then they drafted um, 
um, produced by the committee when compared and revised for harmony with each other. The scholars were not paid for their translation work, but they were required to support themselves as best they could, and many were supported by the various colleges, um, you know, such as Oxford and Cambridge. But the committees was formed um, in, I think it was January 1609, and the general committee review met at the Stationaries Hall, London, to review the complete manuscripts for the six companies. Um, the committee included John Boyce, Andrew Dow, John Hammers, and others known by his initial as AL, which is um, actually um, Arthur Lake. Some speculate it's Arthur Lake. Um, so the roster list com com composed of also Francis Bacon, which should be known as William Shakespeare, um, Richard Burgess, John Hemmings, um, Augustine uh, Phillips, uh, Williams um, Kempe, Thomas Pope, John Bryan, Henry Condell, William Sly, Richard Cowley, John Lowen, Samuel Cross, Alexander Cook, Samuel Gilburn, Robert Armin, William Os um, Osler, Nathaniel Phil, John Underwood, N um, Nicholas Tolley, William Estratone, Joseph Tyler, Robert Benfield, Robert Gosh, or Gushi, uh, Richard Robinson, John Stank, uh, Shank, excuse me, <laughs> uh, John Rice, uh, Christopher Beesdon, um, John Duke, hence as in the Duke family um, here in North Carolina um, today, uh, um, James Wilmot, Edward D. Vervey, even a woman served. Her name is Mary Sidney, Mary Sidney, um, William Stanley, the sixth Earl of Derby, Sir Edward Dreyer, or Dyer, um, Roger Manners, the fifth Earl of Rothland, and Sir Henry Naville. All right, so these were um, these particular um, writers under King James who um, helped revise the King James Version that we now mostly read or good Christians read, and um, that's how that came about. And I just wanted to go into that information because that's a lot of information which that is not normally known. All right, we're going to go to the open lines. We got some questions. We're going to start at area code 512. You're on the line. Yo, what's going on? Peace, peace, peace. How's it going? Hey, um, Aleem, well, I was just watching the show, but I was wondering, when are we doing the uh, the hip-hop thing? You know? Um. Nancy, we should be getting ready to do that, you know what I'm saying, um, pretty soon, you know what I'm saying. Um, so it's probably going to be the week after next. Next week we're going to have um, Brother Wesley Muhammad, Dr. Wesley Muhammad on. So we're going to do that the right. um, week after that. So no doubt, Brother Mike, we're going to get you. Okay, no doubt, man. I, I just wanted to see what was going on and everything. And, um, yo, uh, keep doing um, – you know, with with that one one song you did, um, what was it called? Return of the Asian Ones. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm, I'm going to throw that on for you before we get up out of here. All right, all right. All right. I appreciate it, man. Yo, please Thank take you. it easy. All right, please, God. All right, we got area code six seven um, 267. Area code 267, you're on the line. Hey, what's up, man? Please, what's up? Hey, Phelan, I just wanted to know if you knew any information about the uh, Council of Twelve. The Council of Twelve? Yeah. You talking about the you talking about the um the Majesty um Council of Twelve? That what you talking about? Yeah. Majestic. The Majestic. I, I just wasn't clear. Right. Yeah. The um the Majestic Council of Twelve is um nothing more than individual who came together in order to um basically bring this new world order into being and um. 
out actually out of a lot of those programs came forth um the MK Ultra, the MK Delta programs in which that dealt with um uh, mind control, manipulation of the food supplies, which Monsanto's fulfilling now as being um backed by the Rockefellers. Um of course Bill Gates speaking about, you know, um genocide, you know, of the of the population, um sterilization of the population because his father worked on those programs. You know, um, all of this is basically um, part of the Majestic 12 um, maneuvers. And, of course, the Majestic 12 also dealt with UFO technology. At least they claim it's UFO technology. I haven't seen an alien as of yet, you know, um, except they keep calling uh, Mexicans, you know, aliens. That I mean, that's about it, you know. But, you know, as far as um, actual seeing, I've seen aircrafts. I've seen um, UFOs or identified flying objects, you know, but I'm pretty sure that I identified it because I was able to see it. So it was identified, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I didn't see who was flying on it, you know what I'm saying? So um, I think there's a lot of misinformation that is out, um, even though it is claimed that there's at least 57 different species of aliens here upon planet Earth or life forms or, or extraterrestrials. They are saying that, um, we ourselves are made up of at least 22, um, 22 of those species. You know, humanity is made up of at least 22 of those species. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of information out, you know, on that, but that's what you're talking about, the Majestic 12, and that's what that is all symbolic to. You know, also the formation of the CIA in the 1950s, um, along with NASA in the 1950s, and both of those came from... Um, the so-called, quote-unquote, um, people from the OSS or the Nazis um, after World War II. They, those scientists was brought over here, just like Adolf Hitler was brought over here. If you get the book, um, Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. William Cooper speaks about Adolf Hitler didn't die until 1983 and that he lived in Arizona as an artist. You know, so there's a lot of things in which that is going on, you know, and he had, um, you know, naval intelligence, um, secret security um, access, you know, so it would be good for all of us to behoove all of us to go back and read his book again, you know, and check it out. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he speaks about the Majestic 12 in his book, too, if you you don't want to read more information on it. Okay. All right. Next caller, 609. 609, 609, you're on the line. Peace, peace. Peace. A uh, couple questions. Um, are you taking any more students uh, for this uh, wisdom that you're giving? It's like it's, it's so much, man. It's powerful. Oh, yeah. We always take the students. We have our classes, online classes for Hill and Wings Institute uh-huh. every Sunday and Tuesday. We have classes okay. in the classroom. And the class lasts three months in which they be okay. teach on alternative healing as well as also on metaphysics and astral theology. So we teach all this okay. information in the classes. And um yeah, that's, that's email right where me. I'm at, man. Okay. Right. Right where you at, you can throw on the computer, we're gonna go to any meeting or either WebEx and um you'll be able okay. to see my presentations that I'm doing. So you can't see the presentations that I'm doing here on the radio, right. but you will be able to do that in class, and you'll be able to actually you have the classes recorded, and you be, and I will send the presentations to you in order to okay. do research. Okay, that's what's up. So um, those classes um, are three months long, and um, okay. for the for um, tuition of $500 um, for the three okay. months. And so anybody who want, you know, to join the classes, get more of this information, um, this information, a lot of it is in my books, you know, Out of the Womb, In the Mind, as well as also the First World Order. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got many more books coming. We got the next book, um, Holy Orgasm. We got another book um, called Better, um, um, The Blueprint to Great Health. You know, so okay. um, we got a lot of books coming um, ahead this year. You know, so just keep up with us, and we're going to bring you on more fire. Definitely, definitely. That's, that's what's up. This, you bring a lot of understanding because, you know, being um uh I grew up as a young minister in the church and you know, it's like trying to unfold all these lies, man. That uh oh, yeah. teaching in the I, grew up, I, I hold every yeah. position in the church. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. 
I, I was and, a know, musician, and a minister, and everything, man. Most ministers from church don't. Uh, they're not really knowledge, or you know, they they go to like their Bible school, and that's as much as they learn, you know. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. And they don't teach them this information that I'm dropping in, you no, know, nah. um, um, seminary or better yet, cemetery. Um, yeah. You know, so, yeah. um, but this is my the email. one question I had. The one question I did have, you probably can answer this. With a, I don't know if it's like a quick question, but uh, can you explain what the whole thing is or the, the whole movement that's uh behind this whole understanding of what the holy ghost is like you know because in church you know people be flipping out and all that and say, speaking tongues is that is that from another spirit or is that something because they believe it so much it really takes them over or you know what is that a little bit of both um if you go to first corinthians the 12th chapter it speaks about the um gifts in which that you would inherit from the administrations of the same spirit, which is talking about miracles, right. prophecies, healing, um, speaking in tongues, um, interpretation of tongues, faith, knowledge, um, you know, um, all of these things you will inherit or get or um, obtain by okay. this activation. And what, what it's talking about, the Holy Spirit is your kundalini energy, your kundalini shakti energy, which is resonating at the base of your spine. And okay. normally only runs about 10% through your body in which that gives you the life force energy in which that you exist here within this dimension. However, okay. you have you know, more of it to um, 100%. So there's 90% in which that is unused right now. And by mm-hmm. prayer and by meditation, you can tap into more than just the 10%. This is what science okay. is that you only about 2 to 10% of your brain and the other 90% or more is dormant. Okay. So okay. the kundalini, when it is awakened, it opens more areas in the brain, so it gives you activation of the left as well as also the right hemisphere of the brain in which that gives you God consciousness or Christ okay. consciousness. But you have to get okay. to those levels through the prayer and through the meditations, which is positive affirmations or what's called uh, mantras or hesis or hekahus, which is talking about sounds of power or words of power. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you have to come up So it's really not praying like the way they teach you how to pray in church. Because I don't seem to get no results from that. Well, you can do the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer symbolizes bringing down energy um, mm-hmm. um, into the body. You know what I'm saying? Right. And 23rd Psalm symbolizes bringing up energy um, okay. into the body. So um, it's the manipulation of what is called the cosmic force, which is the microcosmic orbit, which is also um, energy or the kundalini as it runs through the middle channel or the middle area of the spinal column up the back, right. which is called the shishuna. And it, um, through what is called the governing vessel and the conceptional vessel, in which that symbolizes the energy coming up from the perineum, which is between the shoulder sac and the anus area, up to the top right. of the head, and then back down from the top of the head, back down to the perineum in the front. So those okay. connections, when you take your tongue and put up behind your um up at your upper palate behind your teeth and you pull up mm-hmm. your anal muscles in the perineum, you keep the energy circulating in your body as you inhale and exhale and it causes an instant or uh, um connection throughout the body. In which that okay. when you move that energy through visualization, um, that becomes your prayer and you can actually say any affirmation that you want to in order to mm-hmm. help with healing, to help with um opening your psychic centers, to help with uh, manifestation and abundance and success. Finances, right. right. Finances, right. Anything which that you want meant by acts and it shall be given. Mm-hmm. Well, acts shall right. be given. You can't ask for something if it's only working at 10%, but you can't even work beyond 10%. That's right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it can be given okay. to you when it's beyond 10%. So that's what that is all symbolic to. You go back to the book of Genesis. Um, it tells you about Abraham gave a tenth of all that he had to the to the um to the king. So that's what the tithe is. Right. No, but it did tell okay. you that it's tithes. But tithes right. also means by the work of your brow. You don't mean by okay. um money coming out your pocket, it means by the work of your brow, which symbolizes the work in which that you do. Because ten mm-hmm. percent of your brain is activated now and you want ninety percent more usage, which gives you hundred percent usage of the brain. So Melchizedek symbolized the ninety percent of the brain that goes unused. Wow, wow. Which wow. symbolizes the ten percent in which that must be given to the ninety so that you can have one hundred percent usage of the brain. Okay. That's what that all wow. symbolizes. But they tell you that okay. it means money, 
They can get 10% yeah, of your so they check. Can fill their pockets up, right. Right. Instead of teaching what the real mystery is, and that is um, bring God or to activate God within the body, because remember, your body right. is the temple of God, First Corinthians 3.16. That's right. Do you not know right. that your body is the temple of God? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Luke 17.21, where it says, the kingdom of God is within you. Within you, right, right. Right. So God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ is within you. And what they have done is wow. given us, is, and they have um, anthropomorphized these characters so that we can worship something outside of us. Which outside is really of us them. is really inside of us, right. Wow. So, right, so in that way, we are the Antichrist because we're worshiping something outside of us. So, yes, in the Old Testament, it says God is the jealous God. Of course he's jealous because huh. you're giving all your energy to something outside of you instead of yeah. focusing on yeah. what is inside of you and the God within you. Wow. Wow. That's that's powerful, man. You know what I'm saying? So we have to stop yeah. being anti crisis and um, begin yeah. to become Christ. And the only way to become yeah. Christ like, as the Christians claim that the name means, is by actually um, not just um, stop cussing. Because that's what they right. think. Oh, I can't. They got nothing to do with that. Right, they got nothing to do with that. You know, all right. of that ain't got nothing to do with do the work. And it yeah. says yeah. the um, the sweat of the brow. Well, anybody know metaphysically, that's talking about the third eye. The third eye is called the forehead, which is in between the eyebrows. The brow. Yep, that's right. About the do the work of the brow is talking about where that serpent at on the tiara of the pharaoh. When you see that serpent <laughs> raising that, it's talking about raising the oh serpent. The word called the mini means serpentine fire. The serpent yeah. fire. Yeah. You can go back to the 1977 <laughs> song. I, um, serpentine fire, earth, wind, and fire. Yeah. Right, 1977. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. But they used to talk about yeah. serpentine fire, morning glory. So, I mean, these are the things in which that are the mysteries in which that we need to um, begin to start um, dispelling these myths, you know, these myths behind. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But the spell has taken us. The Leviathan spell, the spell, spell of Kingo, as Dr. York always called it. Um, mm-hmm. um, we call it the Woody Lynch chip, you know, nowadays. You know what I'm saying? All of it is the same thing as a spell. And the right. Way they have okay. It use trick knowledge and wordplay, reverse psychology, mm. and have everything it up. Okay, I see what you mean. All right. All right, peace. I'll, I'll be on there uh, signing up for that class. All right. All right, then. All right. Um, we got call 502, 502, area code 502. Yeah, this Are is Akun uh, <clears throat> Sahu, Nabjir Sahu, Ali, El Bay. How you doing, bro? I was just tapping in. I see you shot me across something across Facebook. I've been on your page as a friend. I ain't, every time I miss you, but I've been uh, checking you out for like two years now. All right. But I was just tapping in, man. All and right. I'm listening. Appreciate All right. Appreciate yeah, that. All right. Uh, no problem. No problem. All right, appreciate you guys who are here. And um, I'm yeah, back to my co host, my wife, and um, she's getting ready to drop some info on y'all about how to contact us. Peace and honor, listeners. Um, if you would like to take the classes, please email Eileen at healingwingsonline at yahoo.com. Again, that's healing, H E A L I N G, wings with an S, W I N G S, online at yahoo.com. Also, too, for the family that are in St. Louis, it, um, Aleem is doing radio, excuse me, he's doing TV shows every Saturday at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, it's only a 30-minute segment, but we are on mainstream TV. It will be on Channel 7 or on Channel 46, so definitely check that out. That's every Saturday, 6.30 a.m., on Channel 7, Channel 46, y'all call us, let us know what you think, give us some ideas that y'all want to see. The last Saturday he spoke about the 20 presidents before Obama, so he really went in, you know. So y'all check that out. Um, it'll definitely be for six-month segments. We're already all paid up, so we're doing this for the people. So y'all check that out. All right, we got caller 267. Caller 267, you're on the line. Peace. Call it 267. Call it 267. 
All right. You're going to the kind of things you might have left at home or with airport security. The market is open 20. All right. Um, They must be watching TV. (laughs) All right. Um, We're going to get back into this information. All right. Oh, we got another caller, 512. 512, you're on the line. Oh, I'm just listening still. (laughs) Oh, okay. All right. All right. Peace, Brother Mike. Appreciate you. Peace. All right, we got caller 540. Caller 540, you're on the line. Peace. Peace. This is uh, uh, Anubis L. Bay. Uh, Peace, Brother Anubis. How you doing? All right. (laughs) Uh, I I just wanted to know, what did you think about the Supreme Court uh, with the religious act that they just put out, where you could, anyone could do anything they want to do now? With the religious act, and they passed it nine to zero. Okay. okay. Um. Did, did you read any more into it? I didn't really mean that we can just do anything that we want to now. Well, I mean, I thought that's right. what this country's supposed to have been built on already, according to the Constitution, that Congress can can legislate or make any laws concerning um, religion. That's so what I, I mean, so I... right? So I mean, I think. It's a, <laughs> Yeah, I think it's the religious acts is the oxymoron. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, um, if that's the case, then um, we should be able to build like the Vatican then. You know, because originally that's what the Moorish Science Temple or slash the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World slash the Moorish National and Divine Movement of the World or North America was actually set up on originally was for the tenants in order to do the same thing um, in 19, thir- um, 19, um, 20, um, 1913. Um, to 1928, you know, um, as the Vatican. Matter of fact, um, it is said that Prophet Nubajali did it in 1913, and then a year later the Vatican um, ended up doing it, you know, um, and which that formed the um, papal state within the heart of um, Rome or Italy, you know. So, I mean, um, if that's the case, then we should be able to do that too, you know, and form our gov- governments, you know, government as we um, see fit. You know, so um, if that is the case, you know, if that is the case, you know, so um, if it is, then um, that should give us some leeway in order to do what we need to do there. Um, we see that the Moorish Americans are being recognized um, by the various mayors throughout the various states. Um, at least nine mayors have recognized um, the Moorish American Week, January the 8th through the 15th. So, I mean, this this being progress, this making progress. So it's about keep doing what we're doing and getting the message out to the people. Okay. All right. I, I just wanted to know. I, I heard them talking about Sharia law and and the right. other groups. Being right. Sharia law love. is just the word Sharia just means noble. You know, it comes from the word Sharif. You know, or sheriff. You know, and that's just talking about noble law. What that's universal law. You know, so I don't need a law in order to tell me not to steal because um, if I have not been taught how to steal or I did not have to steal out of necessity based on the reptilian portion of the brain, then guess what? I won't be stealing. So, so, so if we teach the, the people how to... Can, right, so can the, go ahead if we teach the people how to be in their higher self instead of their lower self as a society, you know, um, and teach these principles, you know, then we won't have to worry about the things in which that go on and which that becomes part of Shari um, law, such as if you steal your hand, got to get cut off. No, that's nonsense. So so the Moorish Science Temple could set up its own court systems? Of course, their own tribunals, their own court system, yes, with their own um, councils. Okay. That's the way that's it's supposed to be. That's what I thought. So I was just wondering if, if that's going to happen. Is it coming about? Is it will it will that happen? Um, it's coming about in um, in small increments. You know, I mean, uh, we're looking at a school of thought which has been around now for about ninety years or so, almost a hundred years. Um, actually, we're talking about from nineteen thirteen to now. Get ready to be it's twenty twelve. Get ready to go into um, you know twenty thirteen, and so it would be a year you know, of that manifestation. And supposedly it was on May 1st, 1913, in which that um, the old Canaanite or the Canaanite temple was formed or put together by Prophet Nobudrali and um, others, you know. So, you know, we, we will see 
you know, um, as we progress here, you know, I think it's been a lot of slowness within the temple because it was infiltrated, you know, um, you know, by Masons, as Brother Taj speaks of, and we're talking about slave Masons, we're not talking about Freemasons, there's a difference, um, and I always have to make that differentiation, you know, because um, we're not into um, hiding any information from the people, you know, um, so... It was infiltrated, and um, these individuals have stopped the civic side of information in order to do nothing but the religious side, in order to have the people worshiping and hand clapping and basically praying the prophet over Drali. And um, this is the problem which that is going on. And um, we got to go beyond that. You know, there's nothing wrong with um, a ceremony or a ritual in which that, you know, um, you have to do, you know. Um, but when you start putting people under that particular spell for so long and there's no longer um, the explanation of what they're doing and why they're doing it, and they lose um, sight of it, you know, and a lot of the temples no longer have their death chambers part of the institution, which symbolizes first and second and third heaven, you know. So it's similar to the same first and second and third degrees of Freemasonry in a sense, because Prophet Nobu Ali was a um, Rosicrucian, as well as also a um, which is um, as well as also a Shriner and a high degree Mason, and he um, and he was taught by um, people such as Jamal Afghani, who actually um, taught Madame Bavaski, who formed the Theosophical Society, and who was a student of um, of Pastel Beverly Randolph, who was um, the supreme Grand Master of all the Rosicrucians of the world. And who was the best friends to Abraham Lincoln, you know? So, and they was Moors. So, there's a um, there's a lot of information in which that has been taken out, and we um, simply trying to add it back in so that we can find the um, the correct solution to what is going on here. Okay. All right. I, that's that's all I needed to know. I I'll study up on that a little bit more. Uh, all right. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. You. Thank Peace. you. Peace. All right, all right. Um, we're getting ready to get back into the info here for the last few minutes. Matter of fact, I don't think I got too much more time. So we're getting ready to um end this um tonight's discussion. First world all the radio finally, finally we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Order Consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is 
designers gonna do about philosophies and theories and shit that works.